Okay, we are going to take some notes on inequalities, multi-step inequalities. Um, I'm going to sort of show my notes as I go along. The answer key to these notes or the final product of these notes is also linked to Canvas. So don't worry that you might not grab everything as I'm going through this, but it's important that we sort of do one of these inequality things together. So that way you can see what my expectations are for how you're graphing them, um, how you're writing them, how you're working through them. Um, very first thing, multi-step inequalities. You've already played around with inequalities already so far. So you know that when you add or when you multiply or divide by a negative number, there is an important golden rule. That important golden rule is that every single time you multiply or divide by a negative number, you're going to flip the inequality. If you remember, that was all based on that T-Rex versus Triceratops sort of practice that you did, um, that little exploration. If you didn't do that, go back and do it. It's in, let me think, lesson three point or 2.5 or 6, 2.6, I think. Um, do it. I'm serious. Like, seriously, do it. It's really, really helpful and it's enlightening. So every time, I'm going to put this in this little box right here. Every time you multiply or divide by a negative number number you must not a joke you can't pretend you can't just like skip it this time you if you ever multiply or divide by a negative number when you're solving the inequality like it's not like if it already says um 3x times a negative or 3x is greater than negative 9. i'm not talking about if the like part that doesn't have the variable has a negative i'm talking about negative 3x or something like that if you're actually going to have to like divide by negative 3 you must flip the inequality. It is a non-negotiable. If you don't do it, your answer will be wrong. So you should have that written. Again, this will be written down in the answer key as well. All right, so you must flip. And I'm going to like make it super obvious. You must flip that inequality sign. It's so incredibly important. So now we're going to start solving an inequality and there's five steps that you can go through when you're solving this in, in these inequalities. These are like sort of the general rule that you can sort of follow. Very first thing and it's this is like you solve the inequality and then you have to graph it sort of thing. I should say that this is solving it and then graphing it. So first we need to actually solve the inequality. So I'm going to write solve the inequality. So in other words, get the variable by itself. Okay, my very first step, solve the inequality. Once I've solved the inequality, I want to check the order that I've written the inequality. So I'm going to write check the order. And what I mean by that, when you write your inequality, you should truly write it. And I want you to do this with every like equation that we ever do. Write your final answer as variable inequality number. If we have an equation, you'd write variable equal sign number. It's sort of an easy way to say it. Uh, oftentimes, if we were to say something like two is greater than negative x, or two is greater than or equal to x, that's just kind of awkward. Whereas if I write x is less than or equal to two, it just flows off the tongue a little bit better. So you want to have your inequality written in this particular order because it also helps when you're graphing it. So we're going to say this is variable inequality number is the order that you want to have it in variable inequality number okay um i also like to write it I like think of it as vin your parents have a vin number on their car that's the vehicle identification number in this case in math the vin is a variable inequality and the number okay that's great i know it's so cool all right then after that um when we're actually going to solve this 
Let's do that right now. As I solve it, and you'll see this every single time I solve something, I always put a line down the middle of the inequality or through the middle of the equal sign. It helps me keep everything balanced and helps me make sure that I'm doing something on both sides. So I've just drawn my le or line through there. As well, once I've drawn that line, I don't have to necessarily pay attention to the equal sign or pay attention to the inequality so much. The only time I'll pay attention to the inequality is if I'm dividing or multiplying by a negative number. So now I'm gonna solve this baby. If I look at this, I have five minus three X is less than or equal to 13 plus X. As I go through this, I wanna set myself up for success. Now in this situation, I'm going to set myself up for less success. I'm going to pretend that I don't see that this is a minus 3x. If I were setting myself up for sec success, I would say plus 3x and get rid of the negative right away so I don't have to flip my inequality. But I want it to be very clear that I'm going to be multiplying or dividing by a negative number, so I'm not going to set myself up for as much success. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides. So I get 5 minus 4x is less than or equal to 13. So this is what I mean. I could have added 3x to both sides and then I would have gotten a positive 4x on this side and then I wouldn't have had to worry about multiplying or dividing by a negative number. I didn't though, so now I have to deal with the fact that I'm gonna have a negative time a variable, so I'm gonna have to deal with flipping my inequality. So now I'm gonna subtract five from both sides. I get negative 4x is less than or equal to eight. Okay, negative 4x is less than or equal to eight. I'm now going to divide by a negative four on both sides. When I divide by a negative four, I'm gonna put a little asterisk there. So if I didn't pay attention necessarily to flipping my inequality, that little asterisk hopefully would say, oh, but I divided by a negative number, I need to flip everything. So hopefully that helps signal to, to me that I need to flip my inequality. And I get X is greater than a negative two. X is greater than a negative two. Notice I have my asterisks and I decided to flip my inequality. And why? Because I have to. If I don't flip it, I have the wrong answer. All right, so now we have to figure out how to graph this baby. Few things. I have my inequality written down. I've written it in as a, my VIN, variable, inequality, and number. Great, it's in the correct order. That's helpful because I know now which direction I need to graph, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So first thing, we need to circle the number on the number line. Okay, so we first need to create this number line. Does it matter how I create it? No, I just need to have a negative two in there somewhere. I like to put the negative, like my actual answer somewhere in the middle of the number line so it's clear. So I'm gonna put negative two in there. I have negative one, zero, one, negative three, negative four, negative five. So I've now created my number line. I'm going to circle my answer. And when I circle it, I'm gonna keep it open as of right now. I'm gonna keep it a nice open circle. That doesn't necessarily mean my final product is gonna have an open circle, but right now it's an open circle. Then I need to decide, am I gonna have an open circle or a closed circle? And when I say that, I now need to pay attention. Like what inequalities allow me to have an open circle versus a closed circle? Open circle, they are inequalities that look like this, less than or greater than, and then also this one, not equal to. So if it was an open circle, I'd be looking at less than, greater than, or not equal to. In this case, we have a greater than or equal to symbol. So that tells me that I'm actually going to have a closed circle this time. So our open or our closed circle inequalities are less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equal to. So here's my closed circle inequalities. This one is greater than or equal to, so I am going to fill in this circle at that two. Okay, notice I've put this directly on the number line. I haven't made my circle above it or below it. I've put it directly on the number line. It's really helpful because now I know that it's actually that number. Um, I've seen people like create a circle and do it above the number line, but then it looks like it's between one and two or um, three and five or something because they didn't mark every single number on the number line properly. And then it creates a lot of havoc. 
put it right on the number line. Create your circle right there. Then after that, I am going to look at, I need to draw my arrow and I need to draw it in the appropriate direction. Draw my arrow, draw arrow in the appropriate direction. Now, how do I know if it's the appropriate direction or not? Look at your inequality. Since you've written it as inequality in or variable inequality number, if you look at that inequality and if you look at the arrow part of it, that like greater than or less than part of it, not the equal to, but the greater than or less than part of it, it points in a direction. That direction is the part is the direction you're gonna draw your like arrow. So I am going to draw my arrow. So my arrow end mimics the same direction. Do you see that? Isn't that sweet? It's such a great trick. So check that out. Write this down. If you want to, you can pause this video right here so that way you have all of it there ready to go and you can just write it all down. If you don't want to, you can also open up the answer key. I hope this helps and I will see you later. Bye.